Why do cancers come back when patients go through their initial cancer treatment? Some of them do chemo, some of them do radiation, some of them do hormonal treatment, some of them do immunotherapy, some of them do immunology. Some people don't select any conventional treatment and just continue to heal naturally by making lifestyle changes. And in all of these cases, cancers do come back most of the times. And today we're trying to understand this deepest fear that lies in the heart and mind of a cancer patient. Will my cancer come back? When will my cancer come back? And when they're already in remission and then they have a cold or a cough or they have some back pain or any pain in their body, the immediate, the immediate thought is my cancer's coming back. But it doesn't have to be that way. That is fear and fear today is prevalent amongst all human beings. It is the most limiting, the most limiting thing in the mind and the heart of a human being. Fear, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of falling sick, fear of never getting better, the fear of dying, the fear of a cancer coming back again. So yeah, it is true, cancers can come back. There are tiny, tiny cancer cells that never get picked up by chemo, radiation, sometimes it's missed in surgery. It's not the fault of conventional medicine alone. It's because these cells are constantly growing in the body and the conventional treatment or your own immune system may miss it. And when a cancer comes back in the same place, it's usually called a local re uh, reoccurrence. And if it comes back in a different place, then we know it's a metastatic cancer. But no matter what anyone tells you, that only fills our mind with self-limiting thoughts and beliefs that, yep, cancer can never be cured, cancer can never be healed, the survival rates are different for different cancers, it may come back, no one's guaranteeing you every, anything. What's lacking in this is a very powerful drug called hope. When we take hope away from a human being, okay, nothing in the human body or the human mind can ever work well again because you're over-consumed with fear. But today we're going to talk about real things that can help you to prevent your cancer from coming back. I'll be honest with you, there are some, a very small percentage of cancers which may, be, which may be highly genetic in nature. And we have no explanation as to why those cancers come back. Although I'm really of, of a very strong belief that we all have good genes, we all have bad genes. Even a bad gene requires a trigger to express itself into a disease or a problem in the human body. It just doesn't happen. Happen Like so many cases of diabetes where the parents have and the generations have it, but the children don't have it at all, even though doctors say it's hereditary. Because those children and those, that generation changes their lifestyle so that they don't allow the bad gene to express itself. So today we have people who have you know, so many genes through genetic testing and they say, oh, it's gonna to happen to you, it's gonna to happen to your daughter. But it doesn't mean it's gonna happen. You just gotta create the right environment in your body and make sure that you don't have the triggers that will trigger the bad gene to manifest into a cancer or a disease. So my observation over hundreds and hundreds of cancer patients over the last couple of years who have come back with their cancers again, some of them in three months, some of them in six months, some after one to two to even five years. We constantly study these commonalities to figure out why is it coming back to these people. Number one, what we have to understand is your terrain, the inside of your body is either supporting the growth of cancer or it is not favoring the growth of cancer. So when we go through chemo, radiation, hormone treatment, I have nothing against this unless it is just shoved down the patient's throat like a package with no explanation of why, how many cycles need to be done, how to handle the cycles. You know, it's sold like a package deal. I mean, it's real. The problem is real. If the patient doesn't want to take chemo, they sell them radiation. And this is not all people, but it's happening. It's happening all over the world. People are literally getting conned into buying a package for their cancer treatment. And of course, there are Good doctors, bad doctors, good nutritious, bad nutritious, all of that, it exists. You don't blame the system. My point is, most of the cases that we've seen where the cancer comes back, people only take conventional medication and they are never told to change their lifestyle. Now picture this, okay, just picture this. You take your car for servicing, okay? You constantly change the oil, you constantly change the oil, the engine works great but you don't check the air pressure in your car and your tires, you don't look at the other parts to see if it's supporting. It doesn't matter whether you have high quality oil in the engine, the car at some point will break down. And that's exactly what happens when you only take conventional treatment. People are poisoning their bodies with chemo in its honest attempt to kill the cancer cells, but it is also wiping out every class A protein, vitamins, minerals that are required for your body's normal survival. 
and no one's telling you to put that back into your body. Then we move to radiation where we're burning cells and along with the, with the toxic cells, we're burning the healthy cells and decreasing immunity. And no one's telling you at this point as well to change your lifestyle, to change the terrain of your body. And then you do hormone therapy where we just believe that blocking certain hormones will solve your problem, but you're blocking hormones which basically, basically are the most important thing for your entire endocrine system to work in the body. What is your endocrine system? Hormones. Hormones basically have a function of controlling every single reaction, be it biochemical, physiological, in the human body. Trillions of cells are communicating with each other with hormones. You either have the right hormones, the wrong hormones, or an imbalance of hormones, and you have problems. And you were so dependent on taking a hormone therapy that's blocking hormones and messing up the rest of the body. So am I telling you not to take hormone treatment? Absolutely not. Whatever treatment that you take, which is necessary for your body and given to you by your oncologist, take it. Ask the right questions. But if you do not change your lifestyle, if you do not change your lifestyle, by lifestyle I mean what you put in your body, what you feed your immunity to protect you, those trillion cells. If you do not move that body, you don't exercise it. I'm talking about a light walk to keep your blood circulating to carry oxygen, the prana, the life force to trillions of cells in your human body. You have a big problem. If you're not sleeping well, and most cancer patients don't sleep well because of their fear and the medication and all of that stuff, you heal when you sleep, period. You are not healing when you're taking intravenous chemotherapy. You are not healing when you're sitting at the table and getting radiation or being pumped with hormone therapy. You are not healing when you're eating organic vegetables and fruits or even exercising. You are healing when you sleep. When you sleep, your body's intelligence wakes up and repairs you, detoxifies you, rejuvenates you, develops new stem cells in your body to protect you, to heal you, all of that stuff. And the fourth lifestyle state change which we've spoken about and we keep speaking about is stress. So let me give you an example now. People finish their chemo and they're shown the PET scan, hey, we got the tumor, you're cancer free, go enjoy your life, eat what you want, yep, that's all fine. That is your death sentence. Because you don't understand that post your chemo and radiation, your immunity is so low. It is so low. That's why you go through the side effects of chemo and radiation. Because your immunity is constantly being compromised. You lose your hair, you have diarrhea, you have constipation, you're weak, your pigmentation of your skin changes. You have bone pains. All of this is your body telling you, I'm getting weaker and weaker. But the human mind wants to hear what it wants to hear, which means go and eat whatever you want. You are fine. Go back to the lifestyle that probably caused your cancer and start living it again because I'll see you in six months with the same cancer in the same place or in a different part of your body. So what's happened is cancer was your symptom that your lifestyle was wrong unless it's genetic. And even then I told you my reservations on genes and genetics. You had a symptom in your body because you were already sick for the last six months to a year, be it in your mind, be it in your body. And now you take all this treatment thinking it is healing you and curing you and you don't change your lifestyle. You don't get to the root cause of what made you sick in the first place. So if your cancer was brought on by deep distress, emotional distress over the years, and right now you take all the treatment but you're not working with those stressors that caused your problems, okay? What's going to happen? The cancer is going to come back again. If your root cause was your nutrition or your poor lifestyle or lack of sleep or excessive outside eating and sugar and salt and all of these things, yeah, because the world keeps telling us, oh, contamination, carcinogens in the air. We all breathe the same air. We almost all eat the same kind of food, but all of us don't have cancer. The differentiator is what is going on in your mind and how your immunity is working because you can be you can have a six pack or a size zero figure, but you could have low immunity and you will get sick. It doesn't matter how physically you f are, how fit you are. It's great to be physically fit. We look good, we feel good. But how about your immunity? How about the health of your mind and your emotions, which has every connection with almost every single disease today? So fear, number one, how do we overcome fear when we have more knowledge, <clears throat> more knowledge to understand? Okay, that there are so many people who survive cancers. There are so many remission cases who stay in remission for a lifetime. What are these people doing? They're making a change in their lifestyle. They're not taking a statin and oh, their cholesterol levels come down and they're eating biryani and drinking, ci and drinking alcohol and smoking cigarettes just because their doctor says, hey, your triglycerides are great on the report. You're healthy. 
you're sick because you need a statin to keep your levels right under report. And right, the, the same thing with chemo and radiation. Like I said, select a treatment with your oncologist, with your family that you think is the best for you. But if you don't change your lifestyle, you are not addressing the root cause, you are not changing the terrain, the soil in your body that is allowing the cancer cells to grow. You need to change that soil. You need to boost up your immunity. When you've gone through chemo and radiation, it takes roughly three to six months for you to rebuild your body, rebuild your immunity, because the only thing that's going to protect your cancer from not coming back is immunity. Even if there were cells that got missed by, by your chemo or your radiation or your surgery, the intelligence, there is no doctor or scientist or human being in this world who has yet understood the intelligence of the human body, the brain and your immunity. And yet, human beings are so arrogant. We think we know everything and we don't give the intelligence in our own system a break or the support it needs to protect us all the time. So cancers come back in the bodies when people don't change their lifestyles, when they don't focus on boosting their immunity. And it's not about just Googling superfoods and having soursop fruit and curcumin and all of these superfoods that claim they cure cancer because it doesn't work that way. When you've gone through conventional treatment, your gut health is destroyed. It's devastated. So you could be pumping yourself with superfoods and supplements all through the day. But if it's not getting broken down, assimilated and absorbed into your gut, into your blood and transferred to your trillion cells, which makes up the immune system of your entire body, okay, you are still sick. There's a method. There's a reason you got sick. There's a reason why your body has to heal and it needs the support from everywhere. Not just chemicals, not just burning, not just surgery. Take it if you need it. It needs the right food to boost your immunity, the right activity, the right amount of rest to help you recover, and the right amount of emotional support. A cancer patient who's always in fear will manifest the cancer back into their bodies. They will manifest it. What you keep thinking about happens. You keep thinking you're going to be late to work. You will be late to work. You keep thinking your life is miserable. You will be miserable. You keep thinking that I give a shit about everything. I'm going to be happy. You will be happy. That is fear. So what you think about when you have cancer, and it's not easy. I don't have cancer. It's easy for me to say these things. When someone has cancer, the fears are real, but they have to be talked about. They have to be spoken about. Because when you speak, when you communicate, someone can give you logic as to why you should not be afraid of your cancer coming back if you are doing A, B, C, and D and surrendering and trusting that your own body's immunity will take care of you, will take care of you. That is surrender. You live a life with minimum fear. And you're human. The fear will come up, but it will also go down, go down that quickly. Go down that quickly. We put all our faith in the biggest names in the world and hospitals and treatments and stuff. Put some faith in your own human body and the intelligence of your body that is far smarter than everything else that you see around. You give nature what it needs, okay? It grows. It absolutely functions and evolves on its, own, on its own ability, following the laws of nature. But look at our human beings, what we keep doing to our bodies without even giving it the basics. Do what you want with your body, but give it the basics. Give it the support it needs, the immunity it needs to keep you healthy. So again, when people finish cancer, they start going out and they're exposed to passive smoking. One of the biggest and quickest things to get your cancer back into your body, passive smoke. We all know smoking is bad for cancer anyway. And here you are passive smoking or some people even start smoking because their doctors tell them they're fine and they can do what they want. Okay, Acidity. It's shocking how many people have finished their treatment and they are still acidic and constipated probably the root cause of why you got cancer in the first place and now you finished your treatment, you're happy, you're in remission, you go around telling the world but you still wake up with acidity and constipation every single day. Reasons why cancer comes back again. Your sleep, you're not focusing on your sleep, you go back to your lifestyle of late nights and irregular hours. I'm not saying, you know, give that all up but you've been sick. You've got to realign yourself with nature. Do you see what animals do when they're sick? They stop eating and they find a place to rest, period. You're no, long, you're no different. Just because you may have an iPhone and some latest gadgets and technology doesn't make you less human than you are. Just because we have fancy stuff and we're advancing in technology doesn't change the fact that you're still human and you have immunity that you need to feed and support with your lifestyle. Then we have sedentary lifestyles and then we have this never-ending stress. 
If stress was the reason of your sickness, what are you doing right now to handle it? What are you doing to get rid of all of these things? And that's exactly what I mean. If you want to prevent your cancer from coming back, you start making lifestyle changes from the day you get detected with it. Why even wait for that? Let's talk about prevention right now. If you don't want to get cancer, no, if you don't want to get cancer, why isn't anyone saying that cancer is preventable? Why doesn't anyone have the guts to say, if you do the right things, you will not get cancer? Okay, because there's no money in making that statement. All the money is in someone getting cancer and treating people with cancer. What if you changed your mindset and your belief and you believe right now, if I live like a human being and support my body and my mind and my sleep and my exercise and food like a human being in alignment with nature, we will prevent the onset of disease. We will 100% reduce the probability of getting it. The probability, because some of it can be genetic and some things just have no explanation in life. But there's a whole load of, there's a whole load of other people who have cancers induced by poor lifestyle today. And that is in your control. It is inexpensive and free to change your lifestyle right now. So all the fears that you have, you invest that in immunity. I may have, may have had cancer, but I'm in remission right now. I am going to make sure my body's immunity is strong by eating well, sleeping well, moving the right way, and looking after my emotional health. And I trust that my body will take care of me. Why are we so confused? Because you can't sell any of this. Okay, you can't sell any of this. So there is fear induced in every patient's mind. They show you a survival rate which is based on bullshit statistics to sell you another drug to make you more fearful that you need this, this, and this. And even then they won't guarantee you that your cancer will stay free. But why isn't anyone telling you to focus on your own immunity and heal better and prevent? Because there's no money to be made in that. And the sooner human beings start understanding that, the healthier we are gonna be. Which clearly means that you and only you take responsibility and accountability for your own health. Because truly, no one really cares. No one really cares about whether you heal or whether you don't heal. It is all a money game. So you make your decisions for yourself. You invest in immunity. You trust the intelligence of your human body. And you do these little things. Sometimes the cancer may come back again. Fine, you will fight it again. You will boost your immunity. You will see what you did wrong and you will do it again and again until your body gets what it needs to keep you as healthy as you were before you got the cancer. There is always a trigger. There is always an imbalance in the body that manifests into something as it could be a small disease or it could be something as deadly as cancer. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.